Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me James. Hope you guys are all doing well and we're back as we continue the story of Ark and the island map. In this little mini series we're going to be following the four survivors from the island map. In part two of this little mini series we continue Rockwell's journey and continue with the read through of the explorer notes numbered 15 to 29. So gather around, sit back and relax and enjoy Sir Edmund Rockwell's account of what happened on the island. Well, I think I've gotten as far in my studies of the obelisks as my archaeological expertise will take me. A shame, really. This has been such a joyous little diversion that I hate to end it. Ah, oh, Rockwell, you old twit. You've forgotten the origins of this little excursion. Spelunking, did you yourself not hypothesize that there may be more artifacts hidden elsewhere on the island? Surely you can't give up before confirming that? No, certainly not. Nor can I be expected to score the Ark's corners alone. Perhaps someone can spelunk in my stead. Better yet, perhaps someone has already spelunked. After many days scoring the island upon Archimedes, and many more fruitless conversations with the witless savage sods that seem to make up most of the island's population, I finally found the spelunkers I need. A tribe to the northwest called the Iron Brotherhood has apparently found three artifacts themselves, and it's clear that said relics share the same origin as my own. In exchange for my artifacts, the Brotherhood agreed to report the findings to me straight away as they continue their search. What stupendously good fortune! Now I can return to my alchemical studies and with renewed vigour while they crew through the island's caverns in my stead. Brilliant! The first round of my trials for the new Lazarus Chowder has gone marvellously, but I found it hard to maintain my enthusiasm. After all, I will never truly get definitive results with only Mephipithecus subjects. It's quite frustrating. Even so, I see now that Isabel was right. Having my assistants take part in the trials would be asking too much of them, and they're too valuable to risk frivolously. If I cannot find human subjects from the nearby tribes, then I shall have to make do with trials on apes and monkeys. Perhaps it's finally time to capture some Gigantopithecus. I admit, there are times when it's useful to live among simpletons. For example, I was able to trade several gallons of my Lazarus chowder to a group of hunters in exchange for an entire contingent of tamed Gigantopithecus. They never questioned whether it had been tested on humans yet. Well, I suppose if they return with another batch of apes then I'll know the Lazarus chowder doesn't cause asphyxiation, won't I? It's not exactly a conclusive scientific trial, but I suppose it will serve. Unfortunately all these primitive primates have given Rockwell Manor quite the pungent odour. Isabel said she's working on some sort of air freshener, but I hope she makes haste. I am perplexed. Even with an expanded number of test subjects, I can't find the passion that I once had for my research. I truly thought that my recent adventure had lit a fire in my belly, but I constantly find myself losing focus. Confound it all. Perhaps said adventure itself is the problem. Thinking about it, I'm always eager to discuss the obelisks and artifacts I found with my assistants, even when I'm not in the mood for my research. There's a certain allure to them that I cannot describe, something that causes my thoughts to drift in their direction, like a pull of a strong tide. It could simply be a passing fancy. I must give myself more time. I was ever so glad to see Miss Walker again. My assistants are clever in their own right, but dear Helen is still the only person that I feel comfortable diving into my deeper theories with. I fear I may have kept her from getting a word in edgewise though, once I got going on the obelisks. Why I couldn't contain my enthusiasm. My word, I really have become quite enamoured with the subject, haven't I? Well, that settles it. After the next set of trials, I shall go and check on the Iron Brotherhood's progress. Perhaps I can convince Miss Walker to join me. We could make a real scientific expedition out of it. The latest broth of enlightenment trials have concluded. As I expected, I'm disappointed in the results. Thought the primates I tested it on showed increased aptitude for learning. I do not believe any of them have truly ascended to a higher level of intelligence. Will bugger the little bite as I say. My assistants have almost finished preparing my supplies for my next expedition. And I've drafted a letter to send to the Iron Brotherhood ahead of my departure. Soon enough I'll have forgotten all about the... Pardon the interruption. It seems that I have a guest. Now what does that Mr. Nerva doing here? I suppose I'll find out. I've always tried to maintain strict neutrality when it comes to tribe matters, but then again, I've never had an offer this tempting from someone as respectable as Mr. Nerva. 
Not only has he offered to provide me with test subjects, but he's also expressed a mutual interest in investigating the obelisks. All he's asked from me is that I provide him with reliable counsel. I would trust few tribes to be able to make good on such a promise. But Mr. Nervous New Legion is perhaps the most powerful tribe on the island. Indeed, if they maintain their current trajectory, they may be the only powerful tribe on the island. His offer is worth considering at the very least. After much deliberation, I've decided to accept Mr. Nerva's offer. True, the New Legion's not beloved by many other tribes, but was Charlemagne beloved by his enemies? If my studies are to continue, I must be on the right side of history. As part of our agreement, I will need to travel with Mr. Nerva for a time and wait to study the Opalisks until the New Legion have taken care of some smaller matters of foreign policy. As such, I have left Rockwell Manor in Isabel's charge. She will take excellent care of it, I am sure. Well then, on to new frontiers, Excelsior. I admit I may have been rather coy with Mr. Nerva when it comes to the true nature of the obelisks. As a military man, the obelisks would naturally be more useful to him if there was some sort of weapon, and I have made sure to allude to that possibility from time to time. It's not as though I'm selling my gracious host with a falsehood after all. I neither have any proof that the obelisk could be weaponized, nor evidence to the contrary. Their purpose is entirely theoretical at this stage, and a twist in those theories will convince Mr. Nerva to march on the obelisks any sooner, then so be it. The new legion is finally on the march, and not a moment too soon. Mr. Nerva runs his tribe exceptionally well, but their compound is positively spartan. I don't think I saw a single piece of decor anywhere. It certainly made me miss the comforts of Rockwell Manor. I'll say that. At any rate, we're apparently in pursuit of a barbaric beast queen. According to the men, she feasts on the flesh of enemies alongside her army of monsters. Dreadful. Mr. Nerva is convinced that she's heading towards an obelisk. But I see no cause for alarm. No mere heathen could hope to undercover its secrets, and certainly not alone. I'm absolutely astonished, shocked, flabbergasted. Why in the world would Miss Walker investigate the obelisks at the side of such a savage woman? And without notifying me first? Was she intended to discover the secrets behind my back and keep them to herself? The nerve, the audacity, and after I treated her with such respect and civility. Well, unfortunately for her, Sir Edmund Rockwell is always one step ahead of his rivals. Thanks to my partnership with Mr. Nerva, I can combine what scraps of knowledge she has on the obelisk with my own findings. She'll be none the wiser. Why, since she's confined to a cage, I can keep my presence from her concealed altogether. Before arriving on this island, I would have dismissed the idea of a device instantly transporting a person from one location to another as complete and utter poppycock. Yet, that appears exactly what the strange platforms beneath the obelisks are capable of doing. Astounding. Yes, yes, there was a dragon on the other side. I'm sure Mr. Nerva and his men fought quite heroically in battle, but discovering another slobbering beast is trivial in comparison. Imagine, one could go from one side of the globe to the other in the blink of an eye. I'll wager that's just the start of the obelisk's capabilities. I must learn more, I must. I'm starting to become quite cross with Mr. Nerva's impatience. I've had barely any time at all to study the obelisks before we've had to set out again. This time to that cave Miss Walker mentioned. I wonder, does he believe that she knows more about the obelisks than I do? Nonsense, any fool can see that I'm the superior scientist. Besides, I am his official advisor, while she's his prisoner. She isn't even privy to my presence. Nonetheless, I feel compelled to prove my scientific mental. Whatever is in that cave, I shall be the one to discover its purpose. The mysteries of the obelisks are mine to recover, not Miss Walker's or even Mr. Nerva's. Mine. In all my life, I have never seen so magnificent a sight. Mr. Nerva may be becoming the loss of his men, but I would sacrifice them a thousand times over to witness such majesty. I have never seen a night sky so beautiful. Somehow this place looks down upon a world from so high, as though it stands on the peak of Olympus itself. And my word, the exquisite metal this place is made out of. Not to mention that bizarre creature. It reminds me of the material that lines the obelisks, yet somehow more alive. The very walls of this place seem to hum with power and possibility. I must find more information on this material. Perhaps one of these consoles will have something I could use. I'm not familiar with the technology, 
but I'm sure a scientist of my calibre could get something out of them with a little educated fiddling. And that concludes part two of our journey with Sir Edmund Rockwell across the island map. In the next episode of our read through from the complete survivor notes on the island map, we'll be covering Mei Yin's story, a Chinese warrior whose notes are themed like ancient poems and written in traditional Chinese. She appears to be from the Three Kings era as she refers to the Yellow Turban Rebellion in China and also names her favourite raptor Wu Shui, a reference to a famous horse in the Chinese dynasty. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and let me know in the comments what you thought of this episode and your thoughts on Rockwell. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.